Thank you. I'm so glad to see all of you here today. As you have noticed, we have a few people out today. There's a lot traveling, and there's a lot that, um, that we're not feeling well after the festivities, I'm sure. But we're still going to meet here today. We're going to have a good time, and we're looking forward to what the Lord has for us today. We'll go ahead and open our service in a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for your love. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Lord, thank you that uh, you find worth in us. And Lord, through all that you have done for us and provided for us, Lord, you are worthy of the worship that we offer to you today. Lord, I pray that you would meet with us here in this place, in this time, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. some questions in the corners of your mind and traces of discouragement peace you cannot find reflections of the old past they seem to face you every day but this one thing I know for sure Jesus is the way let me hear you now Jesus is the answer oh yes he is for the
I know you've got mountains that you think you cannot climb. I know that your skies have been dark. You think the sun won't shine. But in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true. And everything that is promised, I tell you he will do it for you. Let me hear you say Jesus is the answer. He's the answer for the world for today. The world today. Oh yeah. Of him there's no other. There's no other. Jesus is the way. Set your eyes upon Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Oh yeah. For the world today, above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Sing the second verse again. I know you've got mountains that you think you cannot climb. I know that your skies have been dark. You think the sun won't shine. But in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true. Everything that is promised, I tell you, he will do it for you. Let me tell you today, Jesus is the answer. He's the answer for the world today. Oh, yes, he is above him. There's no other. Jesus is the way. Set your eyes upon Jesus. is the answer. Oh, yeah. For the world today, above him, there's no other. Jesus is the Set way. your eyes upon Jesus. Oh, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the love today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the way, amen, hallelujah, amen, let us rise, let's rightly rise, we're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high.
scripture says in Isaiah, who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and spread out heaven by the span of his, of his palm. And it's a beautiful uh, picture, a beautiful illustration of just how big and how awesome our God is. And when we consider all that he has made and all that he has created, I don't even know if I came into his presence if I'd be able to stand in his presence, but I'd probably be bowed down before him just knowing how great and awesome he is. We're going to be looking um, at a scripture, and I didn't give it to Jacob earlier, so maybe he can put it in for us real quick. We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. I think just about everyone was here last week for our um, Joy of Christmas program, with the exception of Charles. Welcome back, Charles. Glad to see you. Um, but we had a little quiz then, um, so don't give it away. You have three options to choose from by the raising of your hand. You can either choose yes, no, or uh-uh. Okay. Those are your options, yes, no, or uh-uh. All right, and we, have, we started with this quiz, I think only the last question I didn't ask last, last week. There were three wise men who came to worship Jesus. If, if you say yes, raise your hand. Three wise men came to worship Jesus. Yes, raise your hand. No. Uh-uh, raise your hands. Any uh-uh? <laughs> I didn't see any. And then um, there were more than three wise men probably more than likely three wise men that came to worship Jesus. That journey took a long time and a long, a long ways. It probably took many people, a lot of provisions, a lot of probably animals, probably a whole caravan of people that came to make that distance, to make that journey. So probably more than likely, um, more than three. Question number two, you ready? Yes, no, uh. The wise men came to worship Jesus in the manger. Who says yes? The wise men came to worship Jesus in the manger. Who says no? Who says uh uh? Last question. The wise men followed the star from where they were to the place where Jesus was. They followed the star the whole way from where they were to the place where Jesus was. If you say yes, raise your hand. If you say no, raise your hand. If you don't want to raise your hand, raise your hand. We're going to be looking at this story of uh, what we often call the Magi or the wise men that came. And and, and, uh, we we hear the story, we see the nativity sets uh, that are laid out of the baby Jesus in the manger. Uh, We see all of their their gifts, and typically they're they're portrayed as as three wise men. Uh, Like I said, there's probably more. Uh, And more than likely, when we look at the scripture, when we examine what the Bible says, we'll find that they didn't come to the manger where he was. They came to the house where he was. Uh, So we'll we'll look at the scripture here. Uh, We'll read it, and then we'll open in a word of prayer. Matthew 2, 1 through 11. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king? of the Jews, for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, and thus it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, Art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they, he- when they had heard the king, they departed And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. 
And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for its truth. Lord, we thank you that we can look at it today and learn principles that can apply and help us in our lives. Lord, I pray that you would meet with us during this time as we look at your word. May you speak to us. Lord, may you prompt us. May you motivate us. May you move us. Lord, I pray that you'd be with those who are out, with those who are not feeling well, those who are traveling. Lord, I pray that you'd be with them, raise them back up, and bring them back to us next week. pray this all in your name. Amen. Have you ever just had one of those days, right? Uh, I was talking to someone today and said, how was your week? Oh, it was one of those weeks. You know, you, there's a day where you wake up and right when you're getting ready, you go and you brush your teeth and you put your toothpaste on your toothbrush and it falls off the tip of your toothbrush and it lands right in your brand new clean shirt. And you got to go into that closet and iron another shirt. How about when you take a sip of your coffee or perhaps maybe your hot chocolate if it's me and it's just a little too hot, and for the rest of the day, you got that feeling on your tongue, right? And it just reminds you, man, I should have waited just a little bit longer. Maybe you find yourself taking a walk, enjoying the cool breeze, and you're walking along the side of the road, pondering the meaning of life while you're looking at all the shiny, fancy cars drive by you. And meanwhile, you're going to pick up your bumper, which fell off about a half mile down the road. Just talk about having one of those days. You know, we've all been there. We've all faced our obstacles in our daily journey that attempt to slow us down. They deter us from reaching our goal, and maybe it just wasn't a bad day. Maybe you've experienced a bad week or perhaps a bad month. Or maybe you look back on 2019 as it's coming to an end, and you think, man, 2019 just wasn't my year. In our text this morning, we will examine the journey of these wise men and learn some truths together that can hopefully help us as we travel on our journey today. I want you to notice first off just the idea of who these people were. These wise men, they're often called magi. Um, they're from, they're actually Medo-Persians. Uh, the, what's the word? The empire, the Persian empire was an ancient empire. Uh, we don't really see them nowadays, but we understand Persian, right? We get the idea of Persian rugs, how they're beautiful. Um, the probably present day Iran is where is, uh, a lot of where their empire was centralized. But they were smart people. They were um, astrologers. They were very much into astronomy, uh, and very much into technology. And so it's no surprise that when we examine their culture of who they are, that we see these three wise men looking up at the heavens looking up at the stars and wondering about it. There was an encounter that uh, a famous character that we are all probably familiar with had um, with the Persian Empire. He was taken into captivity by them. He prayed three times a day, just like he always had. Um, he was captured and put into a den of lions. We know who this person is? Daniel. The person of Daniel. We find Daniel in the Old Testament being taken captive by the Persians, being taken captive, and he was faithful and he was committed. The Persian people, they were not um, a Christian, uh, obviously not a Christian nation. They did not worship uh, the one true God, but they did only worship one God. They were one of the few in that era that was monotheistic. And so I wonder if maybe it was Daniel who put in their minds, hey, there's going to be a sign of a coming Messiah, a, a Savior. We're going to see his star in the east. It was prophesied of old. And I wonder if maybe it's from Daniel that these wise men have learned to look to the heavens. And so we find them traveling on their journey. We see these people. They're uh, Persians. They were uh, probably Zoroastrians as far as what kind of religion they practice, a very uh, ancient religion that's still practiced uh, in some countries even today. They were counselors to the Persian king. They themselves are often referenced as king. We sing that song, We Three Kings of Orient Are. 
And it may have come from Psalm 72, 11, Yea, all kings shall bow down before him. And we asked that question today, more than likely, as I mentioned, there were probably more than three. That journey from where they were to where they went to Jerusalem was a long journey. During that time period, you got to have, even today, walking down Main Street at, after dark, it helps to travel in packs, right? And so, of course, these guys probably traveled in, in numbers greater than three, uh, again, safety in numbers, and they had many provisions that they needed to carry for that journey. And as we look at the scripture, it says that the wise men from the east came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Now, I'm picking your brains today. You guys didn't realize there was quiz day here at Embrace Church. They came from the east, and where do they go? To Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where they went. And we sang the song last week, O little town of Bethlehem. Where was Jesus born? In Bethlehem. Did they go to the right place? Uh-uh. They didn't go to the right place, did they? They saw a star in the east, and it led them to the wrong place? Is that what happened? They saw a star in the east, and they knew that they were supposed to go. But did that star lead them the whole way? It didn't. At some point on their journey, that star stopped shining. We see it when the star reappears, and lo, they were exceedingly joyful. If you have something in, in your presence for, for the whole time, you get used to it after a while, right? It just becomes old hat. Oh, there's the star. It's still guiding us on our way. There it is. You go to sleep one day. Oh, the star's still there. Time to go to sleep. You wake up. Oh, the star's still there. Eh, let's keep walking. But that star went away for a little bit, and it came back. The star is back. The star is back. And it led them to that final place where Jesus was. And what we have here is an example of what happened so often in our lives. There's a lot of question as to what this star may have been. Some question, maybe it was a comet, or maybe it was some kind of a supernova. They're talking about the star right now. I think it's called Betelgeuse, uh, one of the biggest stars and one of the brightest stars in our, in our galaxy. It's doing some weird things right now, according to scientists. Uh, they're saying it's, it's getting a little bit dimmer than what it should be. And they're thinking maybe it's going to go into a supernova. That's where it collapses on itself and it becomes an, this great big bright thing. It'll be so bright you'll be able to see it during the day. Um, and they're saying that that might happen probably not in our lifetime, maybe in the next couple hundred years. But they're, they're looking at it now and saying it's doing some pretty weird things. Is this what happened here? I don't know. It's hard to say exactly what they saw or what it was, uh, but they saw something. And we have instances of, of this happening in the scripture all the time. The children of Israel were led out of captivity. By day, uh, well, by night, they had, they had fire. They had a pillar of fire that led them out. By day, they had a, a pillar of cloud. They had a pillar of cloud that led them and, and guided them out. Uh, there are instances um, uh, with the apostle Paul. When he was on his road uh, to Damascus, he, he was riding along, going on his way to try and persecute some Christians, and he fell and was knocked off his horse, and he saw a bright, a bright light. And we have instances where God uses supernatural things to, to, to lead or to, to get attention uh, of his people. We don't know exactly what they saw, but they saw something. Verse 1 says, the Magi were from the east. Verse 2, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. They were from the east, and they saw his star in the east, and they traveled. I find it kind of funny that they, they ask, Who, where is he that is born king? king of the Jews. What is the son of a king? A prince. He's a prince. 
The son of a king is a prince. So Herod gets word of this, and he hears this, and where is he? Who, what? King? I'm king here. And so he gets a little worried. He gets a little upset. And Herod, and he, Herod asks, where is he born, king of the Jews? And we see here in verse 9, And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. When I think of our church, I remember the weeks leading up to the point where we put it out there that we were going to start this work. And I remember the turmoil, the inner turmoil that I felt of resisting of, of not wanting to do it. And I remember the struggle internally of, should we do it? Should we not do it? Should I put it out there? Should we not put it out there? That was God's star in my life, saying this is the direction that you are supposed to go. For years, I did my best to follow. I did my best to do what God was, what I believe God was leading uh, us to do in starting Embrace Church. And now it seems here, here we are, the week after Christmas, one of the, the, the most celebrated Christian holidays in all of the world, where close to three billion people practice and celebrate. And here we are at Embrace Church the week after. And we're a little low, right? You see, sometimes along our journeys, the star may stop shining just a little bit. And we may question, where are we going? What are we doing? Are we heading the right direction? Are we still on the right path? Are we still at the place where we should be? Did you really send me that sign? Did you really give me that direction? Did you really put that on my heart? Was that really from you? Or was it I'm just trying to be selfish? Dear God, this, wh where am I supposed to go? Help me. I can't see this star shining anymore. Sometimes we question, and we see this happening throughout the Bible all the time. For hundreds of years, uh, the, the people had never experienced a drop of water fall from the sky, and God says to Noah, I want you to build an ark. It's going to rain. What in the world is rain? You want me to build an ark because it's going gonna, it's gonna to what? Can you put a definition beside, behind, that, behind that word rain? Because we've never experienced rain before. All right, God, you said do it. I'm going to do it. So him and his family get, to get busy working on an ark. And for years, decades, if not more, they're constructing this thing. And all the while, oh, there goes Noah, crazy Noah, building an ark because it's going to rain. And they jeer him and they mock him. And, and God has set him and given him direction. And he's following the direction. And for all of that time, through all of that, God is silent, providing no other instruction. And the day came where the rain fell and the people clamored, let us in, let us in. Well, you had your time. You had your chance. There was a man who dreamed a dream. And, and he, in this dream, he had a vision that he would rise to prominence in the land where he was. And he did what often people do is he shared his dream with someone else. And as often as the case, there's those dream snatchers who want to try and crush your dreams when you share it just a little bit. And Joseph ends up finding himself sold into slavery by his brothers. And he's forgotten in a jail cell for years uh, until finally someone remembers who he was and remembers his ability to interpret dreams. And the king says to him, can you interpret my dream? And he interprets his dream and it, and it ends up being beneficial to the kingdom. And what he had dreamed and what he had visioned ended up coming to pass. And he ends up finding himself the second most prominent uh, person in position as far as the, the kingdom goes. And it comes to the point where his brothers come before him in need of food. And they see Joseph sitting on the throne. And they're scared. But he has mercy on them and he has pity on them. And he, and he gives them what they need to sustain them. I wonder if when Joseph was sitting in that jail cell, forgotten, 
having remembered the dream that was given to him, wondered and maybe thought, man, this star is not shining too bright right now. I don't know how 2019 has been for you. I would hope and pray that 2020, regardless of what the house 2019 went, I hope that 2020 is 10 times better. And I trust that it will be. On this journey, God gives us direction, and sometimes the star stops shining. Sometimes the star stops shining, and that's okay. We don't, we don't always have a visual sign of direction that God has for us. But we can trust in his word. We can trust in his Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us. Here's my, here's my philosophy. Here's my thinking. The impression that I had before we started Embrace Church was very real. It was not... Uh, something that I necessarily wanted to do, but it was something that I knew we were supposed to do. Um, and so we did it. My plan is to be here, part of Embrace Church, for as long as God wants me to be. I know where he, where he put, I know the path that he set me on way back here. I don't need the constant affirmations. Am I supposed to be here? 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 No, he said you're supposed to be here. So now you just stay until you get direction to move another, direct, another way. So in these moments where we're struggling a little bit, in these moments of doubt, in these moments of, of should I or should I not, remember what he told you back when he said it and stay on your journey. Remember the commitment that you've made when you felt him speaking to your heart. Remind yourself of, 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 of the presence that he had in your life at that moment. And in those dry times and in those times where things seem a little rough, remember the peace that he gave you once he gave in. Because that's what we need to keep going. That's what we need to, to, to sustain ourselves, to keep ourselves up, to keep ourselves where we should be. It's not always easy, but I know I'm on the right path because I know what he told me way back when. The star does not always shine. We may not have the star, but we do have the scripture. It reminds me of 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Edgar A. Guess wrote a poem, Don't Quit. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, when you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns, and many a failure turns, turns about when he must have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up, through the, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worst that you must not. You may have begun a particular journey in your life where everything seemed so clear at the onset. And now it seems as if maybe we're in a fog and you could question continuing that journey. Understand that the absence of the star is not abandonment by God. Decide, affirm, and commit to complete the journey that God has for you. The prophet Isaiah, he encourages us with his words, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I can only imagine 
how the story would have been a little bit different had the wise men given up. Had they not completed their journey, had they gone all the way to Jerusalem, the capital city, where the king's supposed to be, right? That's why they went there. They end up, they could have gone there, oh, he's not here, let's just turn back. We made it all this way. Or as soon as the star disappeared, man, I guess it's gone. We don't know where to go. We'll just turn back. We're lost. The picture of who they knew Jesus was in giving him those gifts, all symbolizing what he was to do for us. In his birth, they symbolize his ultimate gift, his death, that we may have life. When things are hard, or when things are difficult, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. When it seems so dark, when it's when we're walking that half mile back to pick up that bumper, we're going to praise God we can walk. And we're going to go back and we're going to get it and we're going to make it work. And when that toothpaste falls on our shirt, we're going to go in that closet, get out another one, iron it, make it look nice, make sure we finish brushing our teeth, and then put it on. We're going to learn and we're going to move on. And we're going to get through this journey. I'm excited for what 2020 bring, is going to bring for each and every one of us in our own lives. I'm excited for what God is going to do with and through Embrace Church. And I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. The best days are still to come. I promise you that. I've been in places, churches, big and small. And what it takes is consistency. We just keep plugging. We just keep moving. We just keep walking. We just keep working. We just keep doing what we know we're supposed to be doing day in and day out. It gets a little monotonous after a while. Oh, it's Sunday morning. It's time to go and get ready. It gets a little monotonous. Oh, he's made up another flyer. He wants us to pass him out. Oh, it gets monotonous. It gets old. The routine's a little bit dry sometimes. But you know what? We keep going and we keep plugging along. We keep doing what God says to do, and he will bring the expected end. We've got to stay faithful, though. Will you commit? Will you be faithful? Will you continue on this journey that we're on? I don't want the story to change. It would have been really good if so-and-so had stuck it out. It would have been even better if so-and-so had stuck it out. We won't know all those answers to all those questions and hypotheticals, but I hope that you will commit yourself to not only journeying with this church, but in that personal journey with you and God, that you'll build it, that you'll keep fostering it, that you'll, that you'll make some time alone with you and God away from this place, that you'll build that relationship with him, and that you'll, you'll, you'll have that, that personal time with you and your creator. And when you solidify that yourself, it makes what happens here so much easier. And it gives you the opportunity to be a blessing to someone else who's just starting on their journey. May God use us to draw someone closer to him. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, we thank you for the direction that you give us. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be committed, that when we see your spirit and we feel your spirit working in our lives, Lord, that we feel that prompting of you moving in our hearts to act. Lord, that we would obey. And Lord, that in our obedience as we continue in our journey, Lord, though things may sometimes not make sense, though things are sometimes difficult, though the star may stop shining, Lord, would you help us to just keep going? Lord, we have your word and we have your spirit. If you're here this afternoon and perhaps you just need to commit and decide, Lord, when the star stops shining, I'm going to keep following. I'm going to keep following your word. If you commit that today, would you raise your hand?
Lord, when the star stops shining, I'm just going to keep following you. I see your hands. You may put them down. Maybe you're here today and you're, you've been following. You've been faithful and you've been committed and, and you know where you are on your journey, but perhaps maybe you can be an encouragement to someone else on their journey. Lord, use me to be an encouragement to someone, to someone else to keep keeping on. If that's you today and you just want to be used by God to be an encouragement to someone else, will you raise your hand? I see your hands. Oh, dear Father in heaven, Lord, that you would help us to stay committed to you. Lord, that you would help us to keep following even when the star stops shining. Lord, that you would use us, that you would guide us, that you would, that you would give us direction, and Lord, that it would be clear, but in those moments of of doubt and of fog, Lord, that we would just depend on your word and on your truth. Lord, we wouldn't give up. Lord, as we see others on their journey, Lord, would we, would we be an encouragement to them? Lord, will we help them on their way? Lord, will we help lighten their load? Will we lift their burdens? That they can be drawn closer to you. Lord, as this new year approaches, may we decide in our hearts today to draw closer to you, closer than we've ever been, Lord, we are as close to you as we want to be. We are as close to you as we want to be. Lord, help us to want nothing more than you. Help us, lead us, and guide us. As we end this year and we approach another, Lord, may our focus and direction be only on you. In your name, amen. During this time, you're welcome to, to sit quietly in your seats and pray. Make those commitments in your hearts uh, for yourself and to God. We'll have a time of communion. Uh, you're welcome to partake as well. I'll play quietly on the piano, but this time is yours.
your goodness to us. Lord, thank you for your love. Lord, I pray that you'd help us. Lord, as we embark on this new year, Lord, that we remember the moments when you speak to us, that you'd lead us and guide us, and Lord, that we'd remember that. And Lord, that we would simply commit to do what you've led us to do. Lord, you promise to never leave us or forsake us. Lord, you promise that you will always be there with us in the good times and in the bad. You promise never to leave. Lord, may we trust and rely and depend on you throughout this journey. In your name, amen. Well, again, thank you for being here. I'm so glad to see all of you. Um, pray that you would continue to be as faithful in 2019 that you'll be twice as faithful in 2020. Uh, we, all, we can always do a little bit more, uh, not just in attendance, but in our witness um, outside of this place, uh, in our encouraging words to others uh, that we come across, um, and just simply trying to be a light to those that we come across in our own community. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll go and we'll take up our offering. Um, you have your offering envelopes. If you have, um, if you've given online, we're going to change things starting next next year. If you have set up an online account and you give primarily through your online account, we're going to ask that you don't fill out an offering envelope because it gets just a little confusing, right? Uh, this gets this happens when you go to our website, embracechurchsa.org, um, and we have that thing set up where you can give, where you set up an online account. It lets you track all of your giving, lets you see all of those things. If that's where you're giving, don't fill out an offering envelope because when you turn it in. When you give online, it tracks. And then when we get an offering envelope, that's what we use to input to, tr to keep track of. So sometimes we're getting double uh, inputs, okay? And we don't want that to happen. So I think uh, for the new year, we'll just starting off, if you're giving through your online account, whether it comes out regularly, um, then you don't have to fill out an offering envelope. If you're giving by cash, check, credit card, cash app, or even PayPal, go ahead and fill out an offering envelope. And that way, we'll be sure to input that into um, our database when we keep track of the records, okay? Um, we should have, I think our requirement is by the end of January, year-end statements for you. Uh, so we'll be working on compiling those if you're planning on using those for your for tax, um, tax requirements or uh, forms to, to put in for your taxes when you file your taxes. We'll have those forms for you. If you are using our online account and you've been keeping track of those, you should be able to print off your own year-end receipt um, but we're going to go through and just make sure everything's accurate and up to date um, for you as well. Okay. I think we'll go ahead and we'll pray for our offering, and then we'll have a few more announcements after that. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, again, thank you for sustaining this work. Lord, thank you for the faithfulness and the generosity of those that are here. Lord, again, I pray that you would help uh, what is given, um, that it would be used to further your work here in this place. I pray this all in your name. If you would like to give through um, credit card today, uh, we do have a machine. Graciela normally takes it, but I'll be glad to take care of that for you um, after, after service today. We were planning on having a board meeting today. It's hard to have a board meeting without a board here. We have a board. They have not resigned, all right? They're all here. Uh, Diane was not feeling well today. Diane and Carrie were not feeling well today after all the holiday stuff. Um, Graciela is traveling um, with, I believe, her brothers in town, so we wish them um, a safe and fun time while they're away. Um, hopefully they'll all be back with us next week. Um, so I'm thinking we'll probably push. Uh, I may meet informally with the board. Um, I don't know if we'll do it here or if we'll do it at my house. I'll have to get with them and see exa exactly what we need to do. But I'll put a, out an announcement. Um, if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, we'll make it known to everybody. So if you'd like to be a part and, and, and observe and come in, um, you're welcome to do so. Um, but we'll try and keep um, on that normal schedule of our board meetings. I think we've set them on the fourth Sunday of every month. The holidays got us all out of whack, but we'll be back to our normal schedule after that. Next week um, is our first Sunday of the month, so we're going to have our, um, if anyone would like to join and be a, a, an official member of Embrace Church, uh, we're going to have a membership class uh, next week after the service. It's not going to be very long. Uh, just kind of give you some insight of how we operate, how we run, why we exist, uh, what our mission and what our goal is. Um, no obligation if you, if you, after hearing everything and you don't want to join, that's not a problem. Um, 
but it, it, gives, it gives you membership. Um, attendance does not make you a member. You have to have an intention of wanting to be a member, and then uh, you have to express your intent to join and then actually join, okay? You uh, uh, retain membership by giving um, something as far as contribution to the church. We don't require that you, that you tithe, but you have to contribute something, okay? So if you're interested in that, that'll be next week after service. Um, next week as well, what, what, what we're going to be doing as a church, we're going to be having, uh, we're, gonna, we're going to be revealing what our theme is going to be for 2020 as a church. Uh, this theme um, is going to be what, what motivates us, what pushes us, what, what will carry us through 2020 um, as we continue in laboring uh, together for Christ. So we'll do this every year. Uh, we'll reveal the theme. You'll see this, this phrase that, that, we're, that we've come up with um, on a lot, of our, uh, a lot of our slides and a lot of our branding and a lot of stuff like that. For 2020, this is what, as a church, we will be doing together. All right, and so I um, ask that you come out for that. We'll reveal that uh, for you next Sunday as well as we start off. It's our first Sunday of 2020. Can you believe that? 2020. I just kind of wonder sometimes, 2050, will I still be here? I think so. Um, but I'm excited for this new decade. It's, it's funny when we look back and you see all of the stuff from the 2000s, right? And you see the clothes and you see the, the music, and you see the outfits that they sometimes wear, and you're thinking, man, I lived through that. We didn't look that bad, did we? <laughs> it's worse when you go back to the 80s, yeah. and you can see the hair and the jumpsuits, and, the also, and then I, I remember the 80s. I don't go back as far as the 70s or the 60s. Some of y'all remember those. <laughs> so I'm excited for what 2020 looks like. Uh, once we cross 2030, we'll look back at this coming decade and we'll rem reminisce of all the good times and the bad times that we've been through together and we'll rejoice. Uh, so I'm looking forward to what, our, what is in store for our church for this coming year and I hope you're excited too. Uh, lots of ideas, lots of plans to get us really rolling. So I'm excited for that. Pray that you'll come and be a part of that um, theme reveal for next Sunday. Are we missing anything? There's a, a sign-up sheet for our potluck. We're going to have our potlucks again on our third Sunday of the month. Please sign up um, if you're able to bring a dish, uh, and we'll, we'll get that rolling for the third Sunday of the month as well. For those who are not here, reach out to them. Let them know they were missed. Uh, we're praying for them. Um, we're looking forward to, uh, to having them back next week. On the 9th, again, we'll be starting again our midweek Bible study. Um, so not this Thursday, but the Thursday following, uh, 7 o'clock right here. All right. I have a question for the choir, so if um, you guys can meet with me real quick after service, I have a question for you guys. Um, but that is it. We are dismissed. Thank you all for being here. Love you all.